welcome back to the Grim Workshop. Now, I told you in the last video we were going to deal with some of the shortcomings of these PVC survival bows. And I believe we're going to end up breaking one before this is all said and done. Now, PVC does not like getting cold. And I live in Ohio, so my area sure does get cold outside. Now, it's 50 today. It's actually a really nice day. These bows are going to sit outside, unstrung, and I'm going to shoot them every chance I get. Now, with the short daylight hours, I'm not going to get to shoot these every single day. But I'm going to come out here. I'm going to take a video of myself shooting a couple of these bows. Uh, this one is about 42 pounds. This one has uh, fiberglass driveway sticks in it. I've got another straight pipe. So this pipe has no liner in it. That one is about 28 pounds. Now, my prediction is that the one with the driveway stake is still going to be a shootable bow, even if this cracks on the outside. Now, the one without the driveway stake to reinforce it, I don't think that's going to hold up as long, but there's one sure way to find out. So I can nearly guarantee that these bows are going to crack when the weather starts getting really cold out, but I don't know what that temperature is going to be. So this is going to be kind of a learning experience for both of us. Now, if you want to do a similar project with your bows in your area, maybe we can start to put a little bit of data together and have a better concept of the temperature range that these bows actually work in. Now, I've worked with regular PVC in the cold before, and I know it gets cold and brittle. So to keep this bow from cracking and actually injuring myself, I'm going to wrap this in duct tape. So duct tape is something that I carry on a spool tool. I use it for a ton of different projects. We've used it building these bows to hold the driveway stakes together. I've used duct tape or also to make a, a rest for my arrows. So the duct tape is something that you would conceivably have with you anyway. And if in your situation, when you were putting one of these bows to use, if you knew from experience that this is when the bow starts to get kind of wonky and there's a pretty good chance it's gonna break, then that would be a perfect time to use the duct tape that you carry and go ahead and wrap these bows to protect yourself. Now these are inexpensive, but we're still gonna treat these like it's a regular bow. We're gonna not leave our bow strung when we're not shooting it. Now, when this bow is strung, you can see it's under tension at a natural state. So I'm preloaded a little bit with weight. Now, when you leave a bow strung too long, there is a chance, pretty good chance, that when you take the string off, it's going to hold this shape. So it's not going to return to its straight, normal position. And what that does is that robs energy and that robs power from the bow. Now, I did have some questions about how to string these up. With a recurve or a longbow, a lot of times people use a commercial stringer. It's not really needed with these bows. There is a couple different methods. There's the push method and there's the step through method. So with the push method, I'm gonna take the bottom of my limb and just put it right in my instep. Now I'm gonna point the top limb away from my eye. I'm gonna grab my bow around the grip. I'm gonna hold stiff with my off hand and I'm gonna flex that bow a little bit. Now while I do that, I'm gonna slip the string off and I'm gonna ease this forward. Now the most important part of that entire sequence is keeping the limb away from your eye. You're not gonna to wanna to be flexing this bow while you're looking or have your eyes anywhere near the limb of this bow. So this bow's taken a little bit of set, but it's natural for a bow to hold this set for a little while. As it rests, the materials kind of straighten themselves out. So to string this bow, it's gonna be the same concept. I've got one string on, and that's gonna stay on the entire time. I'm going to put the bow down into my instep. I'm going to grab the bow around the handle. I'm going to pull and slide up. And as I get this into the notch, I kind of ease up a little bit and make sure it holds. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure your strings are in your grooves. And then the first time you draw this back, kind of ease it back, make sure your string is settled and you're ready to shoot. So I'm unstrung again, and we're gonna string the bow up this time using the step through method. Now the step through method is pretty popular actually. So I'm gonna take the limb of the bow and I'm gonna put it on top of my foot. Now I'm gonna step through between the string and the bow, 
the back of the grip is going to sit against my knee. Now with my top hand, I'm going to lean forward, riding the string up. And there we go. Now, just like the other method, you're going to want to take a look, make sure your string seated, and then go ahead and draw the bow back slowly a few times, making sure that your string's seated into place properly. So here's unstringing with that step through method. The bow is going to sit on top of my foot, and then I just step right through, and the grip is on the back of my knee. At this point, I'm going to roll my body forward using my arm and my hips. I take slack in the string. I ease the string out of the notch and we're all done. And to string that up again, I'm just flexing the bow, putting the string in the notch and there we have it. So I'll get some tape on these and then we'll just see exactly at what point these bows break. It's almost a guarantee that cold weather is going to end the life of these two bows, but the question is at what temperature does that happen?